Did you know your lungs are one of the largest organs in your body? The surface area of both the lungs is roughly the same size as a tennis court, and the total length of the airways running through them is approximately 1,500 miles. In our last lesson, we looked at gas exchange in flowering plants, which included talking about the structure of the leaf and the role of the stomata. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the adaptations humans have for gas exchange, we'll be looking at the structure of the thorax and alveoli, we'll then finish the lesson talking about the biological consequences of smoking. Please remember to like, subscribe and post your questions in the comments box below. These are the specification points we'll be covering. In today's lesson, we want to be able to describe the structure of the thorax, be able to explain how alveoli are adapted for gas exchange, and be able to understand the biological consequences of smoking. As a starter, what gases are exchanged in plants? Describe the role of the stomata in gas exchange. Explain why the stomata changes shape. You can pause the video while you think. For question one, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water vapor. For question two, the stomata are pores found on the underside of the leaf, but can also be found on the upper epidermis. They allow gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide to leave and enter the cell. They also allow water to escape. Their opening and closing is controlled by guard cells. For question three, the stomata control gas exchange in the leaf. Each stomata can be opened or closed depending on how turgid its guard cells are. In the light, the cells produce glucose, which lowers the water concentration in them, drawing water into the cells by osmosis. The guard cells become turgid and the stomata open. In the dark, the glucose produced during the day will be used in respiration as no new glucose is made, increasing the concentration of water inside the cell. This is because the solute concentration is falling. This results in water to be drawn out by osmosis. The guard cells lose water, becoming flaccid, and the stomata closes. <laughs> Here's a diagram of the respiratory system. As you breathe in, air enters via the mouth and nose. It will then enter an organ called the trachea. This organ is supported by rings of cartilage that prevent it from collapsing. The trachea branches into two bronchia, one going into each lung. These are also supported by rings of cartilage. Each bronchus branches into smaller tubes called bronchioles. At the end of each bronchial are millions of alveoli where gas exchange takes place. Here, oxygen enters the blood and carbon dioxide will leave the blood. In adult humans, the alveoli number can range from 274 to 790 million. Located at the end of the bronchial tubes, when you breathe in, the alveoli expand and take oxygen in. When you breathe out, the alveoli shrink and carbon dioxide is expelled. Gas exchange involves the movement of oxygen into the red blood cells from the alveoli, as well as carbon dioxide moving out of the red blood cells into the alveoli. This occurs via diffusion. Your alveoli are adapted to allow for gas exchange to occur. These adaptations include the cells of the alveoli are one cell thick, which reduces the diffusion distance. If the diffusion distance is shorter, diffusion occurs much more quickly. Alveoli create a large surface area. This increases the surface area to volume ratio, so more gas exchange can occur. Alveoli have moist walls, allowing gases to dissolve and easily pass through the gas exchange surface. They have a good supply, ensuring oxygen-rich blood is taken away from the lungs and carbon dioxide-rich blood is taken to the lungs. This is important in keeping the concentration gradient steep. Breathing also maintains the concentration gradient, ensuring that the oxygen concentration in the alveoli is always higher than in the capillaries, so oxygen moves from the alveoli into the blood, and carbon dioxide diffuses in the opposite direction. Let's now look at how breathing or ventilation occurs, starting with inhalation. When you breathe in, the internal intercostal muscles found on the inside of the rib cage relax, and the external intercostal muscles found on the outside of the rib cage contract. This pulls the rib cage upwards and outwards. The diaphragm contracts, pulling downwards, and the lung volume increases and air pressure inside decreases. Air is pushed into the lungs. During exhalation, when you breathe out, the external intercostal muscles relax and the internal intercostal muscles contract, pulling the rib cage downwards and inwards. The diaphragm relaxes moving back upwards, the lung volume decreases and the air pressure inside increases. Air is pushed out of the lungs. Tobacco kills more than 8 million people each year. More than 7 million of those deaths are a result of direct tobacco use. 
while about 1.2 million are a result of non-smokers being exposed to secondhand smoke. Tobacco contains nicotine, which is an addictive substance that increases the dependency to smoking. Nicotine also increases heart rate and blood pressure and makes blood vessels narrower than normal. This can lead to heart disease. Smoking tobacco produces carbon monoxide. This gas is dangerous as it has a greater affinity than oxygen to bind to red blood cells. Therefore, it reduces the levels of oxygen in your body. Tobacco also contains tar, a sticky substance that can lead to cancer of the mouth, the throat, and the lungs. It also reduces gas exchange by coating the lungs, including the alveoli. Finally, tobacco contains toxic chemicals such as benzene, arsenic, and formaldehyde. People who smoke will develop a smoker's cough. To understand how this happens, we need to look at our respiratory system. If we zoom in, we can see specialized cells called ciliated epithelial cells. These are cells with tiny hair-like structures on their surface. These hairs sweep mucus, trap dust, and bacteria up to the back of the throat, where it can then be swallowed. When a person smokes, the cilia stop moving, and this leads to a buildup of mucus, bacteria, and dirt. Smokers therefore develop a cough to manually move mucus around their respiratory system, which we refer to as the smoker's cough. Cardiovascular disease is another consequence of people who smoke. The lining of the arteries, including the coronary arteries, which are the arteries that supply blood to your heart, can be damaged during smoking. This damage is caused by a buildup of fatty material in the arteries, which can cause a heart attack or a stroke. Chemicals in cigarette smoke can also increase the likelihood of blood clotting, which can also result in a heart attack or stroke. <laughs> Let's now have a look at an exam style question. Complete the table to show the composition of air inhaled and exhaled. You can pause the video while you think. In the first column, the missing answers are lower and higher. In the second column, the missing answers are higher and lower. In this next question, give two features of the alveoli that allow large amounts of oxygen to enter the blood. You can pause the video while you think. You can mention any two of the following answers. They have a large surface area, they are one cell thick or have a short diffusion distance. Or finally, they have a good blood supply or many capillaries. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the structure of the thorax, be able to explain how the alveoli are adapted for gas exchange, and be able to understand the biological consequences of smoking. In our next lesson, we'll look at the phloem and the xylem in the transport of nutrients in plants as well as understanding transpiration and the factors that affect it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and post any questions in the comments box below.